Beflemi, Olivia Yassé, Nana, Ablapoku, Yanouma, Yolemi. Who marked the history of my region and my country thanks to her sacrifice, her bravery, and her dignity. Hi everyone, today I'm visiting the Baule people of Queen Abla Poko. I'm going to a village called Ngatangariko. The trip took about four hours from Abidjan to the village. Okay, guys, we are passing Yamasukru. We are on the way to the village now, so I think we've got about 45 minutes to go. mine Stefan invited me to see the village and to learn about the people. He was born and raised in Europe but he moved back to Ivory Coast where his parents originated from. It's been years since his move back and he's built a home in his grandmother's village Ngatangariko. Soon after arriving at the village, we had lunch with some of Stefan's relatives and other men from the village. I ate yam yam for the first time in my life. They warned me and told me that it was bitter, but I thought I could handle it. So here I am warning you. Let me know in the comment section if you've ever eaten it before and what your experience was. Later in the evening, I sat down with Stefan to find out more about Queen Abla Pokao, the queen and the founder of the Baule people. Welcome to Ngata Doliko. Ngata Doliko is a village of about 3,000 people located in the center of Côte d'Ivoire. You are right now in the center, in the actual physical center of Côte d'Ivoire. Uh, this is a, a village uh, uh, of Baule tribe. The Baule is one of the main tribe of Côte d'Ivoire. We are located in the center and center east of the country. The Baule uh, means in our language the child is dead. Ba-uli. Ba is child. Uli is dead. So the story says that uh, in the 17th century, in what is currently Ghana, there was uh, a feud in the royal kingdom of the Ashanti. And uh, the queen to be, uh, which was called Abla Poku, fled Ghana in the 18th century to escape murder by people who did not want her son to be the king. So she fled uh, about four to five hundred kilometers uh, with people. Uh, so she fled to what is Côte d'Ivoire, very uh, not far from here, and uh, she was um, she was stopped by uh, a river, which is uh, which is here, not far from here. And at this river, she sacrificed her son to protect all the people who was flying with her. So the child, the king to be, was sacrificed and they escaped from the murderers. They established themselves here in Côte d'Ivoire and uh, they call themselves Baoulé people. Uh, Baoulé is part of the big Akan group and we speak the same language, we have same traditions and uh, this is basically how I can give you a quick summary of the, 
the story of our people. Is there still any connection between people here and people in Ghana? Yes. Uh, we, we, the Baule people is a subgroup of the Akan, like the Ashanti, like the Apollo, like the Agni uh, in Cote d'Ivoire. We must have about 14 to 15 Akan ethnic group, uh, including those who are in neighboring Ghana, even in Togo, who are all part of the Akan group. So our language is, uh, is, uh, has same roots. We understand each other more or less. And there is, especially with Ghana, uh, uh, important connection. Some people in Cote d'Ivoire, for example, are traditional chiefs on the other side of the border and vice versa. So yes, connection still remains and uh, very strong. Can you tell us more about the customs? Like, do you think that they still maintained the customs here, the customs is in Togo? The... Okay, I was born and raised in Europe. So I mean, I'm back here in, in my village uh, since a few years. So I'm also in the learning process, but uh, uh, the customs in the Akan people, uh, the common customs, and the main one is the matriarchal system of uh, society. It means that a woman is the chief of the family. This village, for example, is my village, but it's the village of my grandmother. Mm -hmm. So we descend directly from the mother. The Baoli people actually take the name from the mother. Uh, it is until colonization that the colonization imposed the name of the father, but Actually, when you're a camp, your village and your lineage come from the mother because it is said that it's the only certain lineage because we always know who is the mother and the father can be uncertain. So that is actually the, the, what governs all the logic of the society. For example, in a, when someone dies, the inheritance are the nephew from are the children of the sisters and actually the the, the 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 story of that queen that fled to Cote d'Ivoire is because she was the sister of the dying king so her son was the king to be and some of the people in the family did not want the son to become the king so that is the main custom the matriarchal uh, uh, system the the other other uh, tradition that is common is the importance of gold. Uh, we are here in the, in the gold uh, region of Cote d'Ivoire, so gold is, um, is sacred. It's not something that can be sold. It's something that is, uh, we can say, accumulated. It's something that is used to weight. It's something that is used to measure, but you never sell it. Uh, it's bad curse to sell or to make money out of gold. So this village uh, specialty is jewelry. We do traditional jewelry here. So the, that's the second uh, second common uh, common uh, tradition that we have. What else can I say? Uh, the, the rest is things that can be found in other African uh, tradition in general, like uh, respect to the elders, like uh, specific salutation. Uh, specific salutation rituals when someone comes, when it's a foreigner. A few steps that I'm still learning also. Certainly this was a very insightful day for me. I can't wait to see how the people in the village still make the jewelry. Subscribe to follow my journey through Ivory Coast and through the rest of Africa.